hello lovelies welcome back to my channel if today is your first time of seeing this face you are highly welcome my name is Ifoma. please remember to click the subscribe button and also the bell button beside it so that you won't miss out on any of my videos okay to my returning subscribers thank you all for the love and support i appreciate you all thank you <laughs> so guys on today's video i'll be sharing my very first one year experiences and challenges i had in sweden with you guys and you all know what it means yeah it means juicy story time so you might as well grab your popcorn grab your granuts grab your tea grab your coffee grab anything grab their book and make yourself comfortable as i take you down the lane of my very first one year in sweden okay so without wasting much of your time let's get started let's get right into the video <laughs> Guys, the very first thing that was a challenge to me the first year I moved to Sweden is the weather condition. Yes, guys, it wasn't easy for me adjusting to the cold weather. It wasn't easy for me at all. I came to Sweden on August. Then there we are already in fall season, approaching winter. But when I came, ah, I was feeling so cold. As in, the weather was so cold for me. It was as if I was in a deep freezer. Yes, guys. I stayed only two days and I started shouting that I want to go back to Nigeria. <laughs> then my husband was like, you're a joker. <laughs> you just arrived, so you're not going anywhere. Better erase the thought of you going back to Nigeria because you've come to stay. So you're staying. <laughs> It was really difficult for me adjusting to the cold weather and I think maybe it's because I came from Nigeria where the weather is so hot to Sweden where the weather is so cold so it wasn't easy for me adjusting to the cold weather at all and there's this thing about Swedish weather you know in Nigeria once the sun is shining definitely the environment will be hot it's not like that in Sweden during spring and fall season the sun might be shining but it doesn't add anything to the environment so it's always advisable to go out with your jacket even if the sun is shining don't depend on the sunshine go out with your jacket then paraventure you go out there and the weather is and the weather is hot you can take off your jacket instead of going out without your jacket and when you get out there the weather is cold you will be messed up you will be forced to abort any mission you have for the day and return home so to be on the safe side always go out with your jacket especially during spring and fall season you are not to trust the sunshine because the sun will always be shining but the sunshine up there is just as a touch light it doesn't add anything to the environment so that is it guys that's one thing about um swedish weather you are not to trust the sunshine especially during spring and fall season yes always be on the safe side yes always go out with your jacket okay so guys that is it um weather condition was the first challenge i faced in sweden yeah it was difficult for me adjusting to the cold weather but thank god for today look at me if I'm in this winter period putting on this as of then i wouldn't dare even if i was to be in the house i would always put on hand glove put on um head warmer put on my stockings and cover myself with duvet yes guys that was how critical it was so that is it guys um weather condition was the very first challenge i faced in sweden yeah so guys the second thing that was a challenge to me the very first year i arrived in sweden is boredom yes boredom really dealt with me boredom really dealt with me and it got the best of me because why coming to sweden i had it in mind that i was coming to take pictures go places explore the city meet people you know do a lot of fun things not having it in mind that some things might be a hindrance to those things i was expecting yes because i came to sweden on august then it was so cold for me so i was trying everything possible to limit myself from going out the time i came wasn't the best time for me to carry on with my exploration so it was as if my expectations failed me and i really felt bad about it at the time i was a kind of depressed yes because all those things i was expecting they weren't coming true and it really got the best of me because i failed 
to hope on the best, but also prepare myself for the worst. I was only prepared on coming to explore the city, take pictures and do a lot of things. But because the weather was so cold, it wasn't the best time for me to do those things I was expecting. And then my husband was working. So every morning he would go to his working place and I'll be at home with my 10 months old baby doing nothing. I never knew I could get tired of Facebooking, Whatsapping, Instagramming and all that. I got tired of all those things. I got tired of watching movies. All I wanted was to go out. But on the other hand, I was scared of going out because the weather... <laughs> because the weather was so cold for me. So guys, I was forced to stay at home. I was forced to stick my butt at home. <laughs> so guys, that is it. Boredom was the second challenge I faced in Sweden. But thank God, along the line, there's something that came up. There's something that my husband found out for me. In Sweden here, there's a place called Okunafoshkulan, which means open preschool. Yeah, um, the difference between this place and normal preschool is that um, normal preschool, before your child can start going to normal preschool, you have to register your child. You have to um, book on time Yeah, before your child will start going to normal preschool. And your child has to be up to the age of one year before he or she can start going to normal preschool. But this open and first school land, you don't have to wait for your child to be up to the age of one year before he or she can start going. In fact, you can always go there with a day-old baby. Yeah, you can always go there with a day-old baby. And another good thing about this place is that you don't have to register. You don't have to be in queue before you can start going there or before your child can start going there. All you have to do is find Find out the nearest um, open and fresh colon around you. Then every morning you just dress up and go there with your baby. So my husband found out about this place and every morning he would go to work and I would dress my baby and dress myself. Both of us would go there. There's a lot of things to do there. Yes, you can play, you can read, you can learn, you can do a lot of things. You can even gist with other parents. Yes, because a lot of people gather there. Those that don't want to stay at home, they would always go there to meet people and as well learn. Yes, guys. So you have a lot of opportunities there. And the one good thing about this place is that whatever you're doing there, you have the opportunity to carry your child along. Yes, you have the privilege to teach your child by yourself. You have the privilege to do a lot of things with your child. Yes, guys, that's one good thing about this. And they also, they have some people standing there as a teacher. In case if you need help, in case if you want them to help you with one or two, you can always talk to them, you know. It's so good there. I loved it there. In fact, if you're in Sweden and you're looking for a place to go, open a first plan is the best place for you to go with your baby. Yes, I said with your baby because if you don't have any baby with you, they will not allow you. Yeah, you must go there with your child, okay? The place is mainly for kids, yeah, but because it's open preschool, they will allow you to stay there with your child, okay? So for you to be able to go there, you must go there with a baby. You must go there with your child, okay? You as an adult, you cannot go there alone. Yes, that's one thing you have to know about this place, okay? And uh, they open around 9 o'clock and close around um, 2 or 3 o'clock, yeah. But now that there is coronavirus, I don't know if they will be open. I don't know if they will be functioning now. But if you want to go there this period, you might as well check on net, know if they are open or not. But I doubt if they will be open this corona period, okay? So guys, that is it. Open a first school and was my savior. So guys, the third thing that was a challenge to me, the very first year I arrived in Sweden is language barrier. And it's still a challenge to me till today. Yes, here in Sweden, their main language is Swedish, but their second language is English. But the problem is that once you go out there, the very first language they will use to communicate with you is Swedish. Now you have to turn to the person and say, please, I don't understand Swedish. Then the person will speak English if he or she can. Yeah, because I found out that it's not all of them that can speak English. Yes, I said so because there was a time I was in a train station. A man walked up to me and asked me something in Swedish. Then I said to him that I don't understand Swedish. Then the man wasn't able to explain himself in English. So that was how our conversation was terminated. And I felt bad about it. Yeah, I felt bad because I failed to help the man with whatever he had in mind to inquire from me. 
You know, while I was in Nigeria, my husband would always tell me to start learning the basic things that I need to know in Swedish. And I would always tell him not to worry about me, that once I come to Sweden, that he should just give me two months and I'll be so fluent in Swedish language. I was so confident in myself. But I came to Sweden and I started dancing another music. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it's not as if I was not learning while I was in Nigeria. But here is the problem. I came to Sweden and I found out that most of the things I learned, the way I pronounce it, is not the same way that they pronounce it. At times, someone will say something to me. It's the same thing that I know. But because the person pronounced it in another way, I will be thinking the person is saying something else, not knowing that it's the same thing that I knew. <laughs> so that was the problem I was facing. It. And I felt like, does it mean that all those times I was learning, I wasn't learning anything or something? <laughs> So guys, that is it. That was the major problem I was having. And I came to Sweden. I stayed up to two years without going to SFE school. Yeah, SFE means Swedish for immigrants. I wasn't able to go to SFE school for two years because when I came to Sweden, my baby was just 10 months old and I had no one to leave her with. So I had to wait for her to be up to the age of a year so I can enroll her in preschool, then start my own SFE school. But when she was one year old, I enrolled her in preschool, but still I wasn't able to go to SFE school. And the reason is because I got pregnant. So while pregnant, I wasn't feeling myself and I said okay let me just wait once I put to bed then I can register for the SFE so guys that is it I stayed up to two years in Sweden without going to SFE school but thank god I've started my SFE school now and I can proudly say that I can express myself in Swedish language yes guys and soon I'll be making my introduction videos in Swedish language so be ready to learn Swedish with me yes <laughs> So guys, that is it. Language barrier was the third thing that was a challenge to me the very first year I moved to Sweden. And it's still a challenge to me till today. And I'll keep on learning until I become a pro in Swedish language. Yes, guys, that is next it. Next one is the first experience I had in Sweden. Yes. And the first experience I had in Sweden is snow. Yes, guys. The first time I saw snow in Sweden, oh my goodness, it was an epic show, guys. Yes, I literally turned myself into a kid just to enjoy every bit of the snow, guys. That was the day my husband knew that he is married to a village girl and I cared not. I shocked us not. <laughs> I could remember that day I was taking my shower and I came out of the bathroom. I looked through the window and I saw some whitish particles falling down and I was like, Oh my goodness, what is this? What is this? This is so beautiful. Immediately, I ran to the balcony, not minding that it was cold. In fact, I forgot that it was cold. And I was just shouting. I was analyzing the way the snowflakes were falling down. I was like, oh my goodness, look at the way the snowflakes were falling down. This is the same way that the rain used to fall down, you know? I was so happy and I'm happy I enjoyed every bit of it that day. Yes, that was my first time of seeing snow. So I had to catch my phone. I had to enjoy my Myself. but now it's no longer a new thing to me so I don't fancy it anymore <laughs> but the first day I saw it ah I made sure I enjoyed every bit of it guys yeah so guys that is it the first experience I had in Sweden is the snowfall so the last one is the second experience I had in Sweden I'm having a lot of experiences but these two were the ones that marveled me they were the ones that you know they wowed me <laughs> so that's why I have to share these two with you guys yes guys and the last one is tea yeah if you're in Sweden and you want to request for tea please be specific of the kind of tea you want tell them that you want chocolate tea that's if you want chocolate tea otherwise they will offer you Lipton tea it's not like in Nigeria that if you ask someone to give you tea, definitely the person will give you milo and milk. In Sweden, if you ask someone to give you tea without being specific of the kind of tea you want, what you will get is normal Lipton tea. Yes, that is what is known as tea. Yes, guys. <laughs> and there's something that happened to me. There was a time I and my husband, we went to one of his friend's house. Then his friends asked us what he would offer us. He mentioned coffee, juice water tea my husband requested for coffee and i requested for tea <laughs> my brethren guess what happened this man came back with coffee and tea and he gave my husband his coffee and gave me tea and guess what he gave me <laughs> 
he gave me normal lip tint tea and i was like what is this and my husband noticed what happened and he said to me yeah that is what is tea yes if you want a um, milo tea please be specific okay so he had to ask the man to bring sugar and milk so the man brought sugar and milk and I added it to the tea. That was how I was able to take it. If not, I wouldn't have taken it, guys, because it was so bitter for me and that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> so guys, that is it. If you're in Sweden and you want to request for tea, please be specific of the kind of tea you want. If not, you will get normal lip tint tea. And that is it, guys. So what is my purpose of sharing my experiences and challenges with you guys? Hear this. It's for you who is planning on trying traveling, who is planning on visiting places, who is planning on relocating. Please try as much as possible to Google about the place you're planning on visiting. Make a research, know some certain things about the place you're planning on moving to so that when you finally move there and some of those things start coming up to you, they won't hit you so hard. Don't be like me who are just prepared on going to take pictures, explore the city, do a lot of fun things. <laughs> Please don't be like me. Always research a little about the place you want to visit or you want to move to okay guys that is very important yeah also hope for the best but also prepare yourself for the worst you never can tell <laughs> so guys that is it and i hope you enjoyed watching this video kindly give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my youtube channel and turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime i upload a video okay guys I will see you all in my next one. Bye-bye. Sign out. <laughs>